The NBA final is set, and boy, what an intriguing one it is. Kyrie Irving with the Dallas Mavericks returns to Boston as Kristaps Porzingis with the Boston Celtics returns to Dallas. Um, th this is going to be an incredibly fun series between these two teams. And again, we have a long time to wait before this series finally gets going, but for Dallas... Um, th this is not that Luka needed to arrive per se, but this really is finally kind of what the prophecy foretold with Luka Doncic, where he can be that top guy who can come in and guide this team, not just to, oh man, he was dominant. What a performance in losing this series in six. Um, he can guide you to a championship and they are four wins away from him being able to do that. And they have a legitimate shot of doing it. I know that people have, in this stretch, I think, tended to underestimate Boston. We'll get to that in a little bit. But make no mistake about it. This is a live dog, the, the Dallas Mavericks are, in this series. And it's because of the dynamic duo of Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving. For Luka, he is almost a master puppeteer out there. And I know I said that earlier in the playoffs about Jokic, and look where he is now. But he, um, he being Luka, has absolutely controlled so many of these games and now and then um the, the 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 fuck you motherfucker you think you can guard me on Rudy Gobert which is great that I know Slovenian now um that was just like the like his I don't want to say Jordan moment because there's been too many people compared to him lately but um that that was his kind of like when they do the Luka documentary that is going to be one of the first things that they show is after he hits that massive shot over Rudy Gobert doing that but um you almost have to make a commitment to not let him beat you. And we'll see how da or how Boston tries to go about that. But Minnesota just seemed content with him just like, okay, maybe he'll miss. Maybe he'll miss. Maybe he'll miss. Oh, he didn't miss. He didn't miss. He didn't miss. Um, it, it was that way the whole time. And it just, it never, it never figured itself out. He just kept, the one game he didn't hit shots was the one game Minnesota won. Everything else, they didn't do enough to try to take the ball out of his hands. And it's, it's easier said than done, but he is a very good, but willing passer. If you can maybe try to get the ball out of his hands early, maybe that gets it going. But if you do, then Kyrie Irving is there. And Kyrie is playing the best basketball he has played in half a decade. And there was a lot of discussion about this guy for non-basketball reasons. And this doesn't justify any of it. But um, this, th this is why it was so frustrating. The stuff at the end with the Celtics. And the stuff in the entirety of the, his tenure in Brooklyn. Is that if he just gets down to being a basketball player, he is one of the best basketball players in the entire world. And he is showing it again in the, the throughout this entire series. And I, I said it before, this has been an interesting study in... Um, in team building, because I think, like, you look at um, the team behind me, the Blue Jays, they had a big offensive team, but they had some troubles um, with the whole defense at times. So they made a couple of big moves to go out and acquire defensive first players. Dalton, Dalton Varsho, who admittedly was much more defensive first than they thought, um, and that's fixed this year, but uh, they go out and get Varsho, they go out and get Kiermaier, um, and they, they made a move to bring in Matt Chapman. That was a bit prior, but... Um, they, they made some moves to go out and get elite defensive players. And what happened, uh, this team has been bottom third in the league in offense for the last two years. When you have, uh, I, I think the, the, the thought is when you have a high level offensive player like this, where defense is, I don't even want to say secondary, whatever is beyond tertiary, however you say fourth, um, or like 150th, that's where it is priority wise for him. And Kyrie probably isn't getting many defensive player of the year votes either. The thought is, well, you have to go out and just get lockdown defender, lockdown defender, lockdown defender, so that you can kind of make up for, for it. And if you just get guys who are good enough to get you a couple of stops, hey, look at that. Now you're in the NBA Finals. So you, you don't have to get masters. You just have to get competence in that area and just kind of raise that, uh, raise that floor a little bit more. And that, that's what they did, going out acquiring Gafford, um, drafting Lively, and uh, acquiring P.J. Washington, who I, 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 
isn't a huge part of this part of it, but um, defensively, they just got a, better enough to allow them to be able to outscore everyone, which is the, the name of the game. But those two deadline moves, huge. Gafford, um, allowing them to basically have a real viable big the entire game with, between him and Lively. Um, and Washington, who has hit some monumental shots in this series and is finally reaching the potential a lot of people thought for him. 